Oops. Good job. Uh, shrimp juice all over my face. I would like to get to know if I could be the kind of girl that you could be down for. Hi guys, my name is Jihae. Welcome to Good Food Only Club. Today we're going to make Vietnamese spring roll in a bowl, also known as Jai Yo. I wanted to introduce you to uh, this ingredient right here you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, my package says dried black fungus. Uh, sometimes it also says wood ear mushroom. These are dried mushrooms um, and we're going to be reconstituting them in some water and they will expand and it has a very fun kind of cartilagey, crunchy texture. Um, and you can find these at H Mart or your Southeast Asian grocery stores. Um, sometimes they're in kind of a refrigerated, cooler area. So uh, ask your grocer and they will be able to help you find these. So I first got a heaping quarter cup of the wood ear mushrooms and I just washed them, get any dust off. Now I'm um, going to reconstitute them. I just have some boiling water here and I'm just going to put enough to cover and you will see these are going to expand quite a bit. We're gonna set that aside and we'll get to preparing our veggies. So now we're just going to shred pretty much everything. I wish I had my julienne peeler. I accidentally left it at home, so we'll do it the old school way. I'm going to cut them on a bias so that I get thin slices like so. And then we will cut them uh, into meshed dish. So after you cut them this way, I like to stack them up. We'll throw these chopped carrots into the bowl. Now we're gonna chop our small onion, just one small guy. Chop in, I like to um, keep the root end intact, but kind of make a few slices this way. And a couple slices this way, very carefully. That makes for a really nice, easy chop. that goes in the bowl. Now I'm going to add um, two small shallots. If you want to replace the shallot with onion, that's fine. If you want to replace the onion with shallot, that's fine as well. Um, I just love a pungent shallot though. So I'm adding two small ones. They're quite small. And um, when I say two, I mean two whole ones. Sometimes people ask, uh, if they're talking about these sections, because inside of a shallot, typically there's usually two or three sections inside. I mean, two entire shallots. Let's chop up this shallot in the same way that we did the onion. Ah, no, that's okay, it's not too big, so. Same size. with about three to four green onions. These are kind of thick. These two guys have thick bottoms, so I'm gonna run my knife through. Just so that uh, you don't get a huge pungent bite of, you know, the white end of the green onion. I do like to chop my garlic last because garlic tends to leave your cutting board and your knife a little stickier and then it makes dealing with all the other vegetables a little, a little annoying. So um, yeah, now I'm going to chop my garlic. Just using the side of my knife to squish it. And then I'll run my knife through all of them. Okay. I'm gonna add that to the bowl. Ooh, that's what we have so far. Look at how our fungus has grown. Look at that. I've gotten rid of the water and now I'm just going to stack them up, just a couple of them at a time. Oops. And then cut them into little strips. 
I know they look a little crazy, but remember it's just a mushroom. It's just a little fun day. And it just gives a really nice textural component to this dish. Yum. I'm sure there's some sciencey good things in it for you too. You can kind of imagine what it would look like in the wild. Looking at that one. Ready? I'll put that in the bowl as well. Colors, textures. Ugh. So I am going to be adding 15 shrimp in here. I left some of them intact so I could show you how I like to handle them. Uh, these are my favorite shrimps. Whenever I can get shrimp with head on, shell on, I always do because this right here, my friends, is gold. I'll show you what I mean. Um, now, whenever I do make sh or deal with shrimp and I'm not using the head or the shells right away, I do keep a black bag um, just for these so that I can put them in the freezer for when I make stock. Now the heads come off quite easily just like so and this stuff inside is that's orange that really pretty orange color that's called shrimp tamale not like the Mexican tamal um, but this is spelled differently, and uh, it is the word for shrimp fat, or I believe crab fat is also called tamale. And that is where all the flavor is. If you love the flavor of shrimp, then the flavor in the head is going to give you the most concentrated flavor. So definitely save these guys. So that goes in there. Throw some shrimp emojis down there if you love shrimp as well. And let me know, have you had shrimp heads? Um, a lot of times in Asian cuisine, we'll stir fry the whole shrimp with the shell on. Uh, that makes it so that the moisture, you know, the shrimp stays really moist and the flavor gets locked in between the shrimp and the shrimp shell. Oh, and a lot of times people just eat the shell too. We think it's crunchy. Um, we'll just eat the head too, straight up. I know that's, that might be new or sound a little crazy to some people, but if you haven't tried it, I'd love to encourage you to. It is nice. By the way, for this guy, be really careful. I think this is his little weapon in the wild. Uh, this guy can get really, really sharp and stab you and it doesn't feel good. So be careful of that guy. Now, you don't have to devein if you don't want to. I did go ahead and devein it, um, but I mean, it's not really a big deal. So, and to do that, just run your knife along the back. See this guy, take it out. All right, now we're gonna chop this shrimp up into a paste. If you want to, you can put it in a, you know, food processor or something, but I just find this to be so easy that I don't wanna dirty another thing, you know what I mean? All right, so I like to start by chopping it up into little bits, and then you go ham after that, you'll see. Mm, we want it to be kind of pasty. It's kind of going to bind our our stuff together. All right. Oops. Maybe not. Smaller pieces. If you have two knives, you can just go crazy. to uh, put everything together, but I did want to show you this package of kelp noodles that I found at H Mart. Uh, you are able to find this at Whole Foods as well, but it is a little bit pricier. Um, and we, I'll put the link down below, but you do need to doctor them. They don't come like these. But look at that texture. This is going to replace uh, the mung bean noodles that would typically be in the jia or Vietnamese spring roll. So I'm going to use half of the package, which is half of a pound. <laughs> Just so that it's in bite-sized pieces. And this is a really fun textural component too. Um, they are really, I think, just 
exactly like mung bean noodles, also known as uh, glass noodles. And they're very good for you. There's lots of iodine and calcium. Lots of good sciencey stuff. And then we'll add one pound of ground pork. I'm gonna say about a quarter teaspoon or so of salt, but to taste, please. A really good amount of black pepper. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I twisted about 25 times. <laughs> Keeping eighth of a cup of Lakanto. It's almost a quarter cup. Mm. Flex on you with these gorgeous eggs, by the way. Look at that shell. It's so blue and pretty. And the yolks on these, oh, these were some happy, happy chickens that were out in the sun. Typically a really bright amber orange yolk indicates that they've gotten a lot of vitamin D from the sun. So that makes me happy. By the way, these are medium eggs. If you're gonna use large eggs, I think two would be plenty. Um, I am using three here. Right, and then we're going to mix it all together. I got my clean janga. This is one of my favorite things to use in the kitchen. These gloves are so good. Now we're just going to mix everything together. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Whew. All right, I think we got it all nice and incorporated. Oh yes, you guys, I really hope you give this a try. It's so good, it's so, so good. All right, uh, we're going to fry this up now. Yeah. So our cast iron is heating up right now. And um, I just wanted to take time to let you know, this is pretty traditional in terms of what goes inside of a Vietnamese spring roll, um, minus the glass noodles. But we have replaced them with the kelp noodles, which is pretty spot on. Um, sometimes I do like to bulk this up with a little bit more veg. So in this case, I do have um, a Napa cabbage. This is what a Napa cabbage looks like. Um, looks like so, and all I did was just run my knife through it, got some nice shreds. So um, I am going to take a little bit of cabbage and throw it in there, up to you, uh, but that is not traditional. I'm going to cut down a little bit of avocado oil, however you want for your macros, but I think about an eighth of this might be a good size portion for most people. Throw some of that cabbage in there, and you just cook it up. It's so easy. I would actually even just let it sit and let it get brown. All right, so I've given it a minute to set. It's gonna get nice and brown. Look at that browning on there. It's cooking up nicely. The cabbage is wilting, getting nice and soft. Mmm. Okie dokie. So we're going to plate now. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think there's a cute way to plate egg girl in a bowl, but it don't matter, because it's, it's so good. Um, well, I'm just gonna put this egg roll in a bowl. <laughs> I did try to make it a prettier background with all these herbs. These are not just there to be there though. Um, these are herbs that I find typically with a lot of Vietnamese dishes. If you're lucky. Like if you go to maybe a restaurant with that's in an area with a larger Vietnamese population, you're more likely to find some of these herbs on your little herb platter when you go eat. All right. So these right here, actually let's start with some ones we're familiar with. This right here is mint. Um, mint goes so lovely with these like umami flavors. It's just something really bright and fun. Cilantro, of course. Um, this one here, this is Vietnamese perilla leaf. And this is really gorgeous. Let me taste one and try and describe it. Show you. Look at that gorgeous color. It's green, 
on one side and then whoops the other side is this gorgeous purple color Slightly licorice -y. How does it compare to like Thai basil? Mm, a lot more intense than Thai basil. Mm -hmm. mm. It's it's similar to a Korean pearl leaf. Um, gosh. It's really floral. Is it bitter? A little bit. Tiny bit. Like good bitter. Good bitter. <laughs> Absolutely good bitter. This is actually so lovely. I love it. Whenever I Eat Vietnamese, go out to eat Vietnamese food and they have this, I feel really happy. This one here, someone uh, described it to me as Vietnamese mint. And uh, this is really nice too. It's like mint, but not as intense as the Western like mint here. But it smells just like double mint gum or like spearmint. And it's not as sweet but it is very minty. And then this one, I don't really see this one eaten with um, these kinds of meats, but I just love it. So I have it here. This is Rao Rum. And this is looking really sad, but it's really delicious. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna take a second and try to make this look kind of presentable with using these herbs. Uh, we're also gonna eat it with these herbs, so it's not just for, for show. This is our bowl. Uh, I added a little fresh cabbage too because it's just another, I know we have cooked cabbage, but it's another textural element. You know, all the fancy restaurants, they have cabbage two ways or whatever. That's what we're doing here. If you want to, and I highly recommend, uh, to go make this uh, nip cham, nip cham, sorry, nip cham. Um, and we have a video for that. We'll link that down below. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and take that. Put some of that on top of your My mouth is watering. Oh my God. Should we construct the perfect bite? Oh, we should. I'm gonna get to do that and use my hands. I'm gonna add a little crunchy cabbage, a little herby cilantro. Gotta get a little mint in there. Let's do, maybe it won't work. <laughs> we'll start with those herbs. <laughs> mm. It's seriously so good. Please, please try this. Please, please try this. Oh my gosh, you will love it. Oh my God. I can't wait for Karen to try this. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at jheadquan underscore and the brilliant lady behind the camera is Karen Koo. Thank you so much for joining me on Good Food Only Club. My name is Tihe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Sorry. No, you're good. You're you're rolling now. I just was waiting until you were done chewing. <laughs>